Welcome to Nugget 195 with Steve Groman. And in our last Saturday travel and history tip, we talked about big stuff, big golf clubs and mouse traps and... Number two pencils. Barber poles. Yeah. In uh, Tweety Bird's cage. I got to swing in the swing. Right. If you haven't watched that Amazing. Saturday travel tip, <laughs> it's, it's kind of a fun... It was funny. Off the beaten path stop. Off the beaten path. But today we're going to talk about some big bugs and what evolutionists, how they explain some big bugs and how a creationist should explain some big bugs. Well, but maybe let me maybe correct you just a little bit. They don't really explain big bugs. They just explain when and where and such that it is, according to their evolutionary time scale. But they never have a mechanism for it. Just the other day, I did a lesson at a church, uh, and we one of the things we included was the pre-flight condition, the atmosphere, the... Um, Pressures and such. Anyway, we have the mechanism for that, for increased oxygen, increased pressure, which would also increase size. This creation in the original creation was very good in God's eye. And so we are the ones with the mechanism to allow for it. But anyway, people were intrigued by all of the information there. So to cover a little bit of that here today. And most of these, this information is from our lesson entitled Living Proof. And Living Proof is actually our longest lesson. It is actually broken down into two parts because it's actually a total of a three-hour lesson. And we're just going to talk about a few bugs here. Why don't you read what it says, when were insects the biggest? Yeah, the interesting thing is kind of like I was just talking about. It says the Paleozoic era occurred 542 to 250 million years ago. It is divided into six periods of time, and the last two saw the development of largest insects. Well, they can go say this is 300 million, 250 million, this is 542 million. That's what I was talking about. They always will talk about the millions of years ago time, but they don't have a mechanism for it. They just say it happened. Well, we're the ones with the mechanism. We have a pre-flood situation. It goes on to say the atmospheric oxygen is the single most limiting factor on insect size. According to amber, and we, we put several pieces of amber, which is fossil tree resin, uh, out on display at our meetings, they often trap little perfect whatever it is, whether it's a wing, whether it's a, a feather, whether it's a bug, doesn't matter what it is, it perfectly traps and preserves it. But it also traps the atmospheric oxygen, which shows to be somewhere between the 32 to 35 percent range normally. Well, this article goes on and talks about how it's 31 to 35 percent in the prehistoric time compared to the present 21 percent. That is what we're breathing right now, but they don't have a mechanism for that. That was before the flood. It's pre-flood, not prehistoric. We've talked about prehistoric being a ridiculous word because there's no such thing as before history and they're talking about because it's written history and we're not going to go down that rabbit hole today. But again, in amber, there is proof that the oxygen percentage was greater on earth and that is how they claim that these bigger insects were able to live. We agree with that part of it. We just don't agree with the timing. Fossils are what they are. The, the evidence is what it is. And even an evolutionist is honest about things. They're going to see and say the same things, but they always have the timing different. In this case, 250 to, you know, 500 million years ago. Well, there's no evidence for that at all. That's where the problem is. We have the mechanism because in the original creation, it had not rained. It did not rain in the original creation, which means it was a perfectly stable environment. Giant stuff is found, giant plant life is found in the north, in the Arctic. Fascinating stuff that confirms that at one time, this earth, even all the way up north, was a tropic environment. This uh, article that we've got up here talks about how the largest insects lived during the Carboniferous period. It was the time of the dragonfly with over a two-foot wingspan and a millipede that could reach 10 feet. That would that's, be if somebody that's, heebie-jeebies with That's it. a monster. Can you say heebie-jeebies? I think so. Okay. I think that's probably okay. I just okay. did it twice, so I hope it's all right. But yeah, the uh, dragonfly was actually a little larger than that. I think, they, I think it was actually 28 inches, but it, it's huge, huge stuff compared to what we experience today. And here's a, a picture of a fossil of it. That's actually very beautiful. It, it is extremely It says beautiful. it's the largest complete insect wing ever found. And just think about a dragonfly. We've all seen the beautiful dragonfly. Dragonflies, and they're just so delicate. And I imagine even if it had a two foot wingspan, it was still delicate. Well, absolutely. And you can see from the depiction there in the rock of the wings, you can see the various structure of the wings. You can see the veins. You can see the, the delicate structure of the wing. A tooth will last a while. A claw will last a while. A bone will last a while. But a, the delicate structure, whether it's fleshy, whether it's a, a wing, whether it's, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a blood vessel, a vein, artery. Those things rot away quickly. When the delicate nature and structure of the wing is even visible in the fossil, you know it was done very rapidly. 
It did not lay around for millions of years, that's for sure. Yeah, this is actually a beautiful fossil. I'd love to see it. It was dug up in 1940 in the Oklahoma Prairie, and in the next couple of days we'll be driving through part of the Oklahoma Prairie, and I would have loved to known where this one was specifically dug up and found. Many times when fossils have been found in places and we go back to these locations, there's nothing to see. No, not anymore. They've either taken They've everything, got it or buried it, or they have reburied it to protect it, which Frankly, is understandable. I, I'm yeah. in complete agreement yeah. with yeah. that because people are destructive. There's no reason not to protect it and put it into museums. Unfortunately, it's always given an evolutionary slant, which is sad. But hopefully, through these nuggets, you're learning to not believe the evolutionary information, but do enjoy and look at this beautiful stuff that is in the different museums across our country. Absolutely. And just here is another one. But this is the one, one that of your favorites. takes the cake. <laughs> I don't think anyone likes these guys. Nobody likes roaches. Giant cockroach fossil predates the dinosaurs. Perfectly preserved bug found in Ohio. Oh, it was the largest ever complete fossil of a cockroach. This 300 million year old fossil is so complete that the team of Ohio State University can make out the veins on its wings and the bumps on its body. Again, they're attributing it to the Carboniferous time period when Ohio was a giant tropical swamp. That's another thing. Tropical swamp, inland island, inland ocean. A shallow ocean. They know it takes water to make these fossils. They know it takes water. They can claim it all they want. Ohio was a giant tropical swamp. Okay, fine. How? They can say it was a Carboniferous period all they want to, but where? why? How? Where did the swamp go? Why did things change? They never have a mechanism. When you go by museums and you see these things in textbooks or you hear it on Discover or wherever you see or read or hear this, these kind of things, become aware of this, that they never have a mechanism for any of their explanation. And one of the interesting things is like you just mentioned about fossil preservation. It says here, normally we can only hope to find fossils of shells and bones because they have minerals in them that increase their chance for preservation. But something unusual about the chemistry of this ancient site preserved organisms without shell or bones with incredible detail. Again, it is perfectly explained through Noah's flood, which was rapid. The 3.5 inch long, 9 centimeter long insect known as Anthropleura pustulatus. I call him just... That sounds like something at Starbucks. No, that's not where I think it sounds like it comes from, but I'll just I'll refrain myself. It, I call it yucca mucca. Okay. So, as well preserved that Easter Day could see its legs and antenna folded around its body as well as its mouth parts. And that's the grossest part is the antenna on the roach, except for when you squish it. Anyway, so moving along, here's a picture of the fossil and some roaches. I'm sure we're all familiar with roaches. And we actually, sometimes we would buy roaches for our lizards. I did not care for that. <laughs> they liked them. Ugh. And then this article from June 2011 Science News, giant ants once roved Wyoming. And I know we've talked about the ant before in a previous nugget, but just again, look at this. An ant the size of a hummingbird. That's a big ant. That's a big ant. That's a big ant. At least you could see him coming if he was coming towards your sandwich or your toes. You would hope so. You would hope so. And we're going to end with this. What does God say about the ant? Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. They are all quite incredible, whether it's a dragonfly, even a roach. I'm sure they have their place. And the ants. God when made really... these gorgeous creatures. Look at the detail on right. this animal. And and when you this really insect, watch them, say. when you really watch them and see what they're doing and how they're doing, they are... <laughs> they didn't go to school to learn anything. They just they just know it. It's built in. God put it in them what they're supposed to do, and they're fascinating to watch these creatures. They don't have a John Deere tractor or a no, no. Kubota forklift or whatever. You can see them traveling on the ground, and they're always carrying something on their back, and it's like, what are you doing, buddy? Can way, I help way, you out? Way bigger than them <laughs> themselves. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little nugget on big things. Thank you.